Hi. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Great to see you all. Welcome to the Eugene Public Library's celebration of El Dia de los Niños y El Dia de los Libros, or as we call it here at EPL, Dia. It's a celebration that emphasizes the importance of literacy for children and linking children and diverse languages and cultures together and what a powerful link culture and heritage can be. I've brought along some of my favorite librarians to talk about some of their favorite books. Let's just jump in and start talking about all the great things that we have. Hello, I'd like to suggest a couple of books today. The first one is called The Legend of the Coquille by Georgina Lazaro, illustrated by Bruno Robert. This book has intriguing characters. It's action oriented and magical. It's an origin story about Puerto Rico's famous little coquille frog. Long, long ago in Puerto Rico, life was so easy, the animals just sat around and slept and ate. And the parrot queen became very concerned. She had an idea, let's have a race. One animal will represent its group and will enter the race. The winner will win a fantastic prize for the entire group of animals. So they got ready for the race. The intriguing characters consisted of the pelican, ca ca, the dolphin, click click, the snake, hiss, the turtle, just yawned, the iguana, went twip twip, and the toad, brip brip, the shrew squeaked, but the frog said nothing. Okay, it was time for the race. I don't want to tell you the ending, but the bright, bold colored illustrations add to the magical effect of this story. Again, my first suggestion was The Legend of the Coquille by Georgina Lazaro, illustrated by Bruno Robert. My second suggestion comes in English. Me Poppy has a motorcycle by Isabel Quintero, illustrated by Zeke Peña, or in Spanish, Mi Papi Tiene Una Moto. So in this story, it begins with Daisy um, rushing out to greet her father coming home from work, and she carries two helmets. They put on their helmets and take off. Vroom. Con cuidado, be careful. They travel around seeing the people and places of the author's childhood in Corona, California. The bright, colorful artwork accompanies the descriptive language. And in the author's notes at the end, it says, this book is a love letter to both my father and to Corona, California. Again, my second suggestion was, My Poppy Has a Motorcycle by Isabel Quintero, illustrated by C. Pena. Thank you. Hola. I'm so excited to suggest these books to you today. My first book suggestion is One of a Kind Like Me, Unico Como Yo. This book has illustrations by Robert Leo Trejillo, Story a Cuento by Lauren Mayeno and translation, traducción, por Teresa Mlauer. This book is fabulous. It is the story of Danielito. It's right here. And Danielito is going to his school parade and he wants to dress up like a princess. And so this story is all about how he goes with his mom to the thrift store to get a princess dress. And throughout the story, every, all the characters are very supportive and loving to Daniel. It's wonderful to see his teacher help him put his princess dress on. So the whole community is really loving and kind to Daniel and supportive of him. And it has a beautiful ending, really uplifting. So this book was inspired by a true story um, that, of the author's son. And the author has a nice um, note to parents, caregivers, and educators that the book is based on this true story. And she, really, she encourages us to support all children 
um, to explore the world without any restrictions on gender having to do with their activities. So this is a wonderful book. It is totally bilingual. The words are both in English and Spanish. So it's a great book to share with all. This is one of a kind, like me, único como yo. My second book I'd like to suggest is also about families and loving families, big families. This is my big family. This book is by Yanitzia Canetti with, and it's illustrated by Misha Archer. You'll see Alex on the cover of the book. Alex is an only child, but he has a big family in Cuba. And throughout this book, everyone comes to visit from Cuba, all his family, and there's more and more people that join. They're always excited. They're always ready for one more until the house fills up with primos and primas, abuelo, abuela, the cousins. They're all jumping on the bed. The illustrations are bright and fun. And at the, I love this part where when everyone leaves, it's a surprise. And the art changes. I won't give away the surprise ending of the book, but I'll just tell you there is another surprise family member. So check this book out. This is my big family. Yanitia Canetti is, is a, a Cuban American and it's inspired by her family. And if you like those family books, The Heart of Mi Familia and De Donde Eres are also wonderful choices. I'd like to recommend one more book today. This is Lupe Wong Won't Dance. This book is by Dania Barra Hiera, and it's all about Lupe. Lupe is going to be the first female pitcher in the major league. But first, she needs to get all A's in her classes. And if she gets all A's, she's going to be able to meet her favorite pitcher, Fu Li Hernandez, who is Chinakin Mexanese like she is. She's super excited to meet him, but she has to get an A in gym class. And it's all about square dancing, which she hates to do. This book is hilarious. In fact, it just won this year the Sid Fleischman Award for humor. And when I read this first sentence, you'll see why. This is the first sentence of the book. Ready? Okay. My gym shorts burrow into my butt crack like a frightened groundhog. Check this one out, it's so good. All right, these are my suggestions. I hope you enjoy Lupe Wang Won't Dance, My Big Family, and Unico Como Yo. Hi, I'm Wes, and I wanna show, um, celebrate the work of Raul III for my uh, choices for Dia. Um, Raul III is an award-winning author and artist. His real name is Raul Gonzalez. He grew up in El Paso, Texas, and in Ciudad Juarez, which is right across the border. He currently lives in Boston. First series I'd like to show is the Little Lobo series. Now, he wrote and drew this. Uh, the colors are by his wife, Elaine Bay. Um, this is a two-book series. First in the series is Valmos, Let's Go to the Market. The next book in the series is Let's Go Eat. And in September, a third book is coming out called Valmos, Let's Cross the Bridge. Now this series follows Little Lobo, he's a wolf, and he has his own little delivery service where he pulls a little wagon around and delivers for people. He's helped out by his dog, Bernabe, and by his cockroach, friend Coco Rocho and sometimes he's helped out with by his rooster friend Kooky Dookie. Um, these books are bilingual. It's a great way for uh, kids to learn some Spanish words and phrases because they have like Spanish words on many of the objects that you'll see in the book. Um, I really like Raul's artwork because he adds a lot of detail on every page and I'll show you an example. You can see there's just so much going on that you could spend like five minutes on each page just checking out all the different little things going on in the background. And some of it is like really funny. Like up here in the corner, you could see this guy sleeping in a tent and he's got little stinky feet with flies above it. I just want to show you this book has a, it's about luchadores, uh, wrestlers. 
And I just wanted to show you my favorite is this little luchador pig with the page boy haircut. I don't know why I just really like her. She's really cute. The second series I want to talk about is the Lowrider series. Now this is um, drawn by Raw World III. Um, it's written by Kathy Camper, who is a librarian at the Multnomah County Library. Now this is a three book series. The first book is Lowriders in Space. The second book is Lowriders to the Center of the Earth. And the third book, Lowriders Blast from the Past. There is a fourth book that will be coming out soon and it's, gonna, it's called Lowriders to the Rescue. The series follows Guadalupe Impala. She is an Impala. <clears throat> and her name was chosen because the Chevy and Paul Hutt is, um, a, a, sorry, somebody's knocking on the door, uh, is a, she's named after a Chevy and Paula, which is a, a favorite car of lowriders. Um, she's a mechanic extraordinaire and works in a, a garage car, Kartenfloss, which is a play on the name Kartenfloss. And he was one of the most celebrated Mexican comedians and actors and filmmakers. Also working in the garage is Elidio Melaria. He's a mosquito, and I love the play on his last name. And then also, and Elidio, he's uh, he does all the uh, detailing on the cars. And then there's El Chavo Flapjack. He is an octopus, and he washes and polishes all the cars and keeps the garage organized. Um, science time. There really is an octopus called a flapjack octopus. And here's what it looks like. Really cute. And that's one aspect that I really like about these books is there's just a lot of science in um, these books, a lot of science concepts. Like this one, the lowriders go into space and there's a lot of in great information about um, asteroids and meteors and planets and nebulas and what have you. It's great. Um, the interesting aspect about the art in this book is Raul III uses red, black, and blue ballpoint pens to do the artwork. And you can see there's a lot of detail in these also. He said that he grew up using ballpoint pens because um, that was the most readily available tool for him to use for drawing. Because sometimes you can get them at free and sometimes you'd pick them up off the ground. So he wanted to use the classic ballpoint pens. One thing I like about this picture is here they are at their garage and right next door is the library and El Chavo saying, I'm glad the Biblioteca is right next door. Now I'll always get to uh, my books back on time. So those are the two series that I wanted to highlight. Um, thank you very much. All right, and our last two selections for the day are aimed at super awesome teenagers that you know in your life. Uh, the first is a graphic novel, Juliet Takes a Breath. This is by Gabby Riviera, and it is actually based on a super popular novel, um, but because sometimes I don't read novels, I read graphic novels. Um, I really appreciated this book because it gave me a chance to read a super classic novel, um, but with pictures which is really great. And the book follows uh, Juliet, who is a Puerto Rican lesbian who's just really coming into her own and trying to figure out her life and what it means to, um, you know, graduate and be in college and high school and, and what does your life mean when you're starting um, in your late teens and where do you go and, and what gives you focus and purpose? And she's trying to find herself um, and really breaking free of her Puerto Rican family and developing her own. So she's super excited um, when she can go off to a faraway land called Portland, Oregon. And there she's going to intern with her favorite author that she's looked up and admired. Um, her name is Harlow and she's this like white Portland feminist. And she's like, oh my gosh, she's like super excited that she's going to go experience the West Coast and Harlow and being given this internship. Um, but what she really realizes is um, the things that make her special being a brown queer woman um, is actually something to be celebrated and not to be ashamed of, which she starts the book with. 
And so this book is really fun. It's about finding yourself. It's for anybody who wants to look at what the queer experience is from the perspective of being a brown, fierce woman. So that's Juliet Takes a Breath uh, by Gabby Rivera. Oh, so good. Okay. I have to preface this. I don't like poetry. Is that, I'm not allowed to say that, right? Because I'm a librarian. I'm supposed to like all the things. I don't, I don't like poetry. It's so hard for me. But, aha, the Poet X, um, way to make me fall in love with poetry again. Um, Elizabeth Asiendo writes this beautiful, beautiful book that's all done in prose. Um, and it follows our main character, uh, Siomara, or X, or Poet X, um, as she goes about her life. And she is a Dominican she comes from, she's the first generation, and it's all about her life as somebody who doesn't feel like she's ever being heard. And she has a super popular brother who's her twin, and he's always being listened to. And her family is like, pero tu no es fácil. You are not easy, X. You are hard. And she tries to make it that way. She makes herself hard. She gets into fights and she's always like, Ur! because nobody is listening to the words that she says, which is so interesting because the words that she says is this beautiful prose that comes along. And like I said, I, I don't like poetry and yet I'm enraptured by X's life and her journey and, and this questioning of herself of what is her religion and what is her family and what is her place and what is it like to be a woman? Um, so it's got these strong melodic beats to it. Um, this is the print edition, but if you get a chance to download it from our e audiobooks on OverDrive, um, if you're a fan of, say, Amanda Gorman, who did the inaugural speech, um, Young Poet Voices is something that when you hear it gives you a totally different experience, and it's read by the author. Um, it's a multiple award winner. Um, it won the 2019 award for um, a book being written by a Latina, which is the culmination of the 2019 best expression of Latino life. So if you are looking for a book that just draws you in, um, keeps you there and goes on a journey of being a young, fierce woman, the Poet X is definitely for you. Hi everyone, welcome back. Thanks for taking us on this like really cool journey. <laughs> Books for Dia. But you know, at the library, we don't just like to share our love of books. Mm, we like to give you books. So our bilingual gift for children will start at the Eugene Public Library starting Monday, April 19th through Saturday, May 1st. It's, it's free. We have books uh for ages zero to rachel what do we got zero to eight zero to nine that sounds great yeah we've got graphic novels we've got early readers and picture books and board books so come in and grab your own book we love giving books to you oh we it's it's our jam uh take it build your own library at home there's a lot of power in that but rachel that's not it right we have something else special coming up for story time don't we we're so excited as part of our Dia festivities. We're hosting Naibe Reynoso at Family Storytime. Naibe, uh, she wrote how to, how to Fold a Taco, Como Doblar Un Taco. And she's going to be reading it with us at Storytime, but that's not all. We're also giving away copies of her book, How to Fold a Taco, Como Doblar Un Taco. And she even signed a hundred copies of them. So come what? in and grab one of those and then you'll be ready for story time with Naive. Those uh, are just a couple of the activities, Angela, we have going on for Dia. We're giving yeah. away craft kits, right? We're doing mm -hmm. a story walk, dreamers, soñadores um, at, at the uh, community centers. Oh, we're excited about all these activities we have. We love celebrating Dia. So thank you for coming along on this journey with us, listening to some of our favorite books. We hope that you join us for all of our DIA activities this month. Thanks for stopping in and watching us and listening to all of the good books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Adios.